gonna take over. Okay, Ariana. I'm ready. Okay, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just showing your portfolio, right? I'm you're ready. Yes. Talk about your experience, your college experience, a few questions, and people's gonna ask you questions about your experience as well. Okay, you can begin. Introduce yourself, Ariana, and take over. Okay, me. Okay, um, my name is Ariana Lowry. Hi, um, I'm a freshman in my spring semester at University of Buffalo, and I'm majoring in architecture. So I'm gonna show my portfolio. Do I just press present now? I've never used this before. Yes, correct. Okay, can you guys see it? Yes, we can. Ooh, nice, awesome. Yes, we yeah, can see it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this was my fall semester portfolio. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So this was the first project we did. This was like the first time that I realized that like, like, I, I wasn't sure about architecture, and this really broke me so much. I, this was so difficult. Like, it looks simple, but the way they structured it was I have studio class mon Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So every two days, we're making iterations of different ways to stack cards. So it was basically, like, four weeks, three days a week of just, like, coming up with different designs. Um, here we have, like, more drawings, more models and more diagrams of how I was, how I like folded it and more drawings here and here like perspective drawings that took forever. Um, here are some of the earlier models, like earlier iterations that I made with the cards. Um, the fourth one was the one that I went with, but you can see other ones. And this is the second thing that we did. So this is when we started getting into paper. We started with cards because they were smaller. But then we started working in larger scales. I think this was in half scale, which is like, it doesn't sound that big, but it's like huge. Half scale is the absolute worst thing. But this was so, we started off with cards just like last time, except the, the objective of this was to focus on like circulation and creating four places, like four spaces that all connect. We're able to walk through and you can kind of see it in this image right here. Like you would enter through one of the spaces and you would just go around. And we really focused on like shadows and lighting conditions and how it would feel to be in the space, which is why I have like different thicknesses throughout the globe. Um, here's some more drawings, more like technical drawings, yeah, axonometric drawings, I hate saying that. Um, construction diagrams, more um, top, view, yeah, top view drawings. And here, here are some fair scale figure models. And here are some earlier iterations of this project. And this is what I'm talking about, like the small cards that you have to make every single week that take forever. Like, you're supposed to make new ones. I didn't because, like, why would I waste paper and, like, waste more of my time? And they never found out, so I assumed it was fine because it's in my portfolio. And they ended up liking it. So <laughs> these are some more and more drawings. And this is the third project. This is my favorite project because it looks so nice. So we had to take, it started off in Illustrator, so when we first started getting into Illustrator, um, I didn't mind the hive because I took the shape, the hexagon, and I took the idea of a beehive, and the idea of the project was to take one shape, I chose a hexagon, obviously, and to copy and paste it in different ways so a person can get from the top to the bottom of the structure. It doesn't have to be, like, too realistic, but it had to be, like, believable enough to, like, so I could present it. And these are some photos that I took of it. And these are, like, earlier drawings. And, no, these are the drawings. These are the drawings <laughs> that I made. Um, some digital photos uh, in Illustrator that we made. And here are, like, the earlier iterations that you can see. There's, like, I think 25. Is it 20? Oh, no, it's 36. Okay, there's 36 of these. And we had to do that for, I think, a week straight, just creating new designs and starting to get, like, ideas. This is the fourth project. Um, this one, okay, <laughs> I have a lot of complaints about this one. This one is my least favorite, even though it combines like everything we learned throughout the the first like few months of the semester. This one like took the most like out of me. <laughs> like this, the model, the build, the yeah, building the model for this project was so difficult. Like it looks simple. I'll show you photos of the model. Like this is the model over here. It looks really simple, but you can see right here on the final model front section how I messed up because the day of, the day before, 
my glue, something went wrong with it and it didn't dry in time. So it like it collapsed right before we had to like go in and put it up on like the desk for to like show for like show and tell to basically like give our reviews. And I was so disappointed. I left so quickly after that. That was embarrassing. Because like tape is so frowned upon. So it's glue or nothing. And I had to tape my projects. That sucked. Um, here's some more study models. So um, we had to do research centers for, I chose pandas. You choose an animal, I chose pan- pandas. And there's, these are some Photoshop co- fo- uh, Photoshop collages, drawings, um, more Photoshop collages, some study models. This is some research that I did way early in a project. This is my favorite part of every project, like the researching and the earlier stuff, because it's more or less getting an idea for what you want instead of like having to cut everything down to make it actually like work. And this is some work we did in architecture media. So the stuff before is in studio, and this is architecture media class, where we like do CAD, Rhino, and Illustrator, Photoshop, and stuff like that. So this was basically making a zoo using, like we just we were just like working with layers and different line types and stuff like that. And this is some stuff we did in Illustrator. Mm, yeah, that's that. Okay, that's that. That's it. Like, wait, wait, is someone talking? Oh, that's me. Okay, wow. I have actually never seen that before. That is so good. Like, I sent it to you as soon as I was done. As as I forgot. As as Anyways, no, but like the, the part that you said, like with the colors, like, wow. It actually looks way better than I have in my portfolio. My portfolio the looks like shit. The, the AutoCAD one? The, out, uh, the AutoCAD one? I swear. Oh my gosh. Wait, that, that was, was so actually from FaceTime. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I was so done. Um, okay, I have my project, my favorite one. I kept it. I like after I was done, I threw them away because I was so over it. But I do have my favorite one, the hexagon one, and it's like four. These are like all out of paper. <laughs> These are all like all out of paper. So they're different layers, and the idea for the project was to put them together so they can make like a unique space. Let's see if I can do it right now. So basically, if I put them together, they would look something like this, right, right? I have more pieces, but they're, like, floating pieces, so obviously they're not connected. But um, I was really proud of this, because, like, the construction of this is so nice. I never took my so much time in something, and it really paid off. So, that's it. All right, I'm done. I think I I'm done. <laughs> okay, so, like, so questions? Do I take questions now? <laughs> Um, I was going to say if you, Antonio wants to present whatever he wants and then we'll do questions cause, and do both of you guys at the same time because I know a lot of those questions are probably going to apply to both of you guys. It makes so much sense. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm on the phone, so I'm guessing it's like the same thing. Uh, share screen. Everything on your screen will clean up. Okay. All right. You're sharing. Or can you see my? Oh, okay, Jesus. Oh, oh, okay. Can you guys see my screen? Hello. Yeah, you're good. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Um. So yeah, this is my portfolio. Um. I was an architecture major. Uh. For my fall semester of college, I switched. Uh. Fortunately, architecture was very hard. I'll get into that. Anyway, so here's my portfolio. So this is what we started out with. Um. We were just doing cube studies and seeing how we could divide cubes up into shapes. And later on, that was going to evolve into space. So we were just um, really playing with line work and just getting used to, like, Illustrator. So then here we have some uh, scale figure studies that we would later put on our frames. And then here's the five elements which were taken out of the cube. Um, Then we have some isometric views, you know, the Illustrator, pretty crisp. You would think something like this would, like, you know, be pretty easy, but um, it's not. Like, once you get this file from Rhino, it takes, like, a good hour. <laughs> like, like two, both of these would take, like, an hour because you have to do line work and you have to, you know, set colors and group. It's really just a pain, especially, like, for stuff that's, like, overlapping. You have to zoom in. It's really a pain. Um, but, yeah, so then we just have more studies of the space as it uh, evolves. And unlike Ariana, where she had like four or five different projects we from september we had the same project all the way until um the end of the semester 
so it was just evolving over time and like that'll become more clear throughout my um throughout like the, the portfolio presentation um so here we have my elevations and my sections again a pain especially when you have to hatch um so here's like my model well one of my first models this is my uh one fourth scale uh like ariana said like if you use tape like they'll like bully you like you can't use tape you have to use glue and you think you would think something like this would be pretty easy but it's actually a, a pain it's very complicated especially when you have to get into a tight space and if you have like inner you see how i have a, a wooden frame uh, but it's like an object on a frame if there's intersecting parts you have to it's very it's just very difficult like the way you have to put the objects on the frame um it's not very pleasant at all. And I thought this was hard. Um, this is one fourth scale, which is actually, I prefer to work in one fourth. Like Ariana said, half scale is probably like the worst thing to ever happen in the history of like anything. <laughs> no, but like generally half scale, because my overall dimensions of my project in Rhino, it was like 40 feet by 40 feet. So when you half scale that to make a model, it's literally like, well, like 20 inches. <laughs> That's almost two feet, and that's like bigger. That's like bigger than me. So imagine me carrying and like working on a a project that's like two foot by two foot, and I have to cut everything by hand and make templates and cut wood. Like it was, it, it was very very taxing, and it took a lot of time. But um, yeah. So then here I have some exonometrics and perspectives. Again, these are always very interesting uh, to look at and to see the shading and the hatching. Then we just have some more roof plans and cup plans. And as you can see, like I'm slowly starting to develop more of a, like a clear message for my project. Um, in my model, there's not really any space for anybody to occupy it, but then eventually the space is starting to develop with an inner and an outer shell and really just finding an understanding between the both and seeing how humans can interact and uh, interact in the space and what they can do in it. And then eventually I would um, go on to investigate the interconnectivity between all three pieces and how they relate to each other. And uh, here we have some more roof plans of the objects I just showed you and then the cut plans so we can see what it looks like on the inside. And of course, more sections. And then we're slowly starting to get to the more finalized version of our project with the perspectives. Now we can see that the inner and the outer shells of each object is more defined. Uh, over time, we're going to start to develop the, uh, the connectivity, so like the bridges and the, the gaps in between each element. Um, and here are just more elevations. Uh, and some plan section cuts. These are always fun. And some poche. <laughs> and uh, now this is like pretty much the finalized project that I ended up with. We have the elevations of the south elevation, the west elevation, and the sections, and then isometrics showing what the finalized um, project looked like. And then again, with when you're working in Illustrator and you have to export the files from Rhino, it's it's because like especially the way the programs read the files, it's very different at times. So like stuff will be overlapping and it doesn't really understand completely what's going on. So you really have to like be very detail oriented and understand what's going on because there's just it's just so much um and then now we have my some renderings these i really liked i like how it uh, how it came out with the uh with the water element i was so happy when i made that i was like probably like the happiest i was this semester <laughs> but uh, and then here we have the frame uh with the circulation the circulation is basically what connects all of the elements and we have it on the frame and this looks like this is pretty big, like in terms of like a model. So in the actual dimension that ended up being uh, roughly two feet by two feet, uh, which is like an insane scale. And I have some photos I'll show at the end of my models. And then here I'm just showing um, this like an exploded uh, isometric, just showing the inner and outer workings of each shape. And also when you're making models, like originally the models, like we would have to make models maybe like every other two weeks. And I would make the models like just 2D. So instead of doing like the actual 3D like element, I would just do a 2D. So I wouldn't do like 
the entire model because it would just take way too much work. But as we went on, we would have to make like the exact model, like how it looks in Rhino. And um, you have to like be very precise because like I said, you can't use tape and you have to use glue. So when you're cutting and you're trying to connect the 3D surfaces, uh, parts where there's like surface exposed, it's just you have to be extremely precise with the X-Acto blade. And if you're cutting for like four days straight, it just becomes so exhausting, especially on your hands. Like, <laughs> And then here I have some sun study uh, renderings with line work overlap. These came out really nice and crisp. And it just gives you like a good idea of what the sun would look like and how the sun interacts with the piece at certain times of the day. And then here we have some uh, images in my physical model. In my actual like final presentation, I had it like whited out, but when I tried to put it in the portfolio, it looked really awkward, so I just kept the background in. But as you can see, unfortunately, when I this is my final model, and I was working, I kid you not, you can ask Ariana after this, I was working nonstop from, I think I had like three weeks and I was like not going out. Like I wasn't doing anything but this. And it was like insane. Like I wasn't getting any sleep and it was just so exhausting. And I had like cuts all over my hands from the X-Acto blade. And then I have to like cut the wood. Like I'm not a carpenter, but I have to like cut wood, glue the wood. And then like, I don't have time to wait for the glue to dry. So I had to use tape and like that just came, I was just really kind of disappointed with how it turned out in the end. But um, there were some parts of it that I appreciate. Like, this came out really nice. Um, obviously, there's some parts where you could tell there was a gap. You know, there's not much you can do. I was I was genuinely just, like, so exhausted. Because you would think, like, a model like this wouldn't take too long. But it literally took me, like, a good two weeks of, like, nonstop working. Which is very unfortunate. Um, but, yeah. And, yeah, you know, I don't have the model anymore because it was just too big. And, honestly, as soon as I was done with class, I destroyed it because I didn't want to look at it anymore. Um, and yeah, and then here I have some renderings just to give you like a better understanding of what it looks like in Rhino. And that's the end of my portfolio. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, for students to start putting the questions. All right, I, I, I have a question, actually. So, Ariana, you spoke about the iterative process. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and the importance of iteration? Um, so, basically, it was, like, to flesh out, like, all of our ideas, but it's so, like, grueling because, like, at a point you don't have any more. So you're just, like, making up stuff and <laughs> nothing. So it's so, like, it's so repetitive, but it's really helpful. So when you go back to it and you need, like, you need to make a change or you need to think of something else, they're always there for you. And it's helpful. I just don't, like, I just really don't like doing it. I just really don't like doing it. Um, yeah, they had us do it. Like, like, I think we had to make, like, about 10 every two days, which is a lot. But it was helpful. Like, it's important. It just really sucks. I don't, I can't. Yeah, it seems that professors, a lot of them actually push for that process. Yeah. But our TA, he was pretty lenient, and that was, like, on the low side. There were, like, TAs that made students, like, other groups do way, way more. Ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I'm so glad I got, like, a nice TA. So that's nice. Yeah. Um. Um, but yeah, oh, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was going to, like, just kind of, like, chime out with everyone. This is, like, the reiteration process. Like, it can be really annoying, especially when, like, you're doing, like, 40, like, drawings or models of, like, the same thing. But in the end, it actually does kind of help because you can kind of realize, like, hey, this doesn't really work. Let me try something else. Or you can be like, I actually really like this idea and I think I should, like, work on it. And then you could further develop it. And then, like, just doing by doing different iterations, you could kind of see what works and what doesn't. And then also, um, when if you're thinking of like, for me, when I was making my final model, I was thinking also in terms of like, let me try to simplify parts of my of my model in Rhino, so I don't have to be working like nonstop um, making the actual physical model like out of wood and paper. Uh, unfortunately, all the shortcuts I tried to take in Rhino 
didn't really help because I was working for weeks anyways. <laughs> but yeah, you can go now. Sorry about that. It's good. Uh, Gilbert has a question. You could unmute. Uh, it's in the it's in the comments in the chat. Let's see. Um, how did you prepare for COVID college life? Uh, can I ask before I leave for my rose keeper? Yeah. So obviously it was very unfortunate that Ariana and I, you know, had to start our college experience in COVID. Uh, to prepare for it, I mean, I didn't really do much because when I was getting prepared for college, they still were telling me that I was going to go in person. So I didn't really know what to expect, although I was staying cautious. Um, but COVID college life, I mean, I'm I'm staying at home. I was going to stay at home regardless because uh, I go to NYIT, which is a school in the city. It's only like 30 minutes away on the train. Um, I feel like Ariana could better ask this question because she's actually up in Buffalo and she does still have some in-person classes. Uh, but for me, for the most part, uh, college and like going to college in COVID it's been an experience. I'm kind of just ready to just go back in person. Um, because also, I mean, as we all know, school online, I just, I don't really feel like I can learn like that. And, um, I feel like maybe I don't, I just don't really know how um, much it would be different if like in terms of like architecture, if I was doing it in person, maybe I would still be an architecture major. It's actually a really interesting question. Uh, cause I obviously dropped architecture because it was just too much for me to do at home. It was very taxing. Uh, but yeah, Ariana, you can go. Sorry. I can imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> Wait, um, so I was planning to live on campus and then like COVID hit. So I decided not to. Mine was actually the opposite of Antonio. Like he said, his school was like, he said that the school said that they're going to have in-person classes. My school made it seem like it was, like, full lockdown. Like, no one's allowed to leave their dorms. Everything's going on Zoom. Everything's going online. Um, that ended up not happening. I have, in last semester, I had one in-person class, and it was studio. Because that's, that's, like, the most important thing. The whole point of studio is, like, be in person, be able to, like, engage with people around you, do group work and stuff like that, and, like, build models and, like, get help from your TAs and the professors that's right there in front of you. And there's, like, a lot of benefits that I know now because I had to do in-person classes for studio that come with being in person. Um, yeah, so I would say that's helpful, being in person. I didn't really prepare. The only difference is that I would have been on campus instead of commuting to school. So now I just live with family near school and I drive there instead of just, you know, just like living on campus. So that's like the only difference for me. Thank you for that. Uh, next we have Yufeng. Yufeng, you could ask. Hello, uh, yeah, long time no see you, Antonio. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so my question for you is, uh, what are some tips you can provide for people that's planning to go to NYIT? Yeah, um, it's a good school. It's a great school. I love it. Um, and my new major, I'm a digital arts, film and animation major. I love it so much. It's, like, a lot of fun. And But, yeah, anyways, you didn't ask that. Uh, preparing to come to NYIT, um, what I would just say is just um, when you once you're here and you're you know, situated and you have your classes and everything, uh, I think you should, for one of the first things you should do is uh, schedule a meeting with financial aid uh, because they can get you set up with a work-study job. So uh, I'm lucky enough, I have two work-study jobs at the moment at my school uh, and uh, working from home, uh, which is like an amazing opportunity. Um, so I basically do, I, I'm a social media ambassador uh, for my college. So I just like post stuff like on Instagram and on Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, um, and I get paid for that. And it's like crazy. Cause like, you know, who doesn't want to get paid to post for social media, especially during Corona, you know, I'm on, well, I wasn't employed, but like, you know, money and I'm in college too. So the fact that I'm able to do that is a great opportunity. Um, so that if you talk to financial aid, they can get you uh, set up and show you how you can apply for work study and then how you could like apply for jobs. And also being that you go to Wasada, obviously, um, you know, you've had like a lot of great opportunities in the past in terms of like internships and experience. I know you personally, um, you know, have a lot of experience and obviously like great uh, academic record. Uh, so you could definitely, you know, I think you'll definitely have a lot of opportunities at NYIT, honestly. Um, and also like in a certain, in some ways, like in, in the good ways, uh, NYIT is very similar to Assad. It's a very like kind of small community. Um, and like, it's like very, like, it just feels like you kind of know everybody. 
And the professors are amazing. You know, you're going to love it. And I'm excited for you that you're going there. And also, if you ever have any questions, you could just, you know, hit me up. All right. Thank you. Also, uh, for Ariana, because uh, personally, I'm like a person who wants like to stay in New York. Uh, like, what made you want to go to um, Buffalo? Um, I knew that I didn't want to stay in the city for school. I don't know what it was. I think I just wanted like a new like experience because like I've been here. <clears throat> excuse me. I've been in like the city my whole life. Like I already know what it has to offer. Like a lot. Yeah. But I wanted to like go away and experience the college life. Like once again, before COVID hit, I thought I was going to be on campus, but. That didn't happen. But I still, like, enjoy being in, like, new environments with a completely new set of people and really, like, being in a new place and getting to enjoy what that has to offer. I know I'm probably going to go back to New York City eventually because, like, that's my home. <laughs> so after college, it's probably my plan. But, yeah, I think I just wanted a new experience. Like, some are far. Like, eight hours is pretty far. So that's good. All right. Thank you. Um, next, Enrico Martinez. I just read it. He asked me um, if I, I switched majors and why, how come. Uh, yeah, so fall semester, I was a architecture major, and now I'm a digital art and design film and animation major. Uh, the biggest reason why I, well, the two biggest reasons why I switched my majors, as, I mean, you could probably tell during my presentation. For me personally, it was a very intense workload. Um, luckily, because of Wasad, uh, I was able to have like a lot of experience in terms of like, architecture and also just like you know my gpa and the experience that i've had in all aspects at wasad that kind of boosted me in a way and because of that the architecture classes that i were taking were advanced so i was taking um graduate level master's architecture so like there were kids in my class who were in the master's program they're like in their 20s and i was i'm like i was 17 and i was taking architecture classes where people were like way older than me uh, so wait, was, wait, wait, hold on. Actually, what's, what's the oldest person? What's the oldest person in the class? Not that old. They're not like they're not. <laughs> like, <laughs> not like, like this shit. Like twenty, twenty. How would they? That doesn't seem fair. How would they make you do that? You just got there. <laughs> oh, fair? I know. That's why I was like, I just couldn't. Like you, and you know too. Like it was just so exhausting because I would, I wouldn't have. Like I'm a very social person. I like to hang out. I like to be with my family. Right. right. And I just, like, I, could, I, like, I couldn't do anything I wanted to do. And it also it was very bad for, like, my mental health and, like, my physical health. I wasn't eating. And, like, I'm already, like, I weigh, like, three pounds. So, <laughs> so like, you know. And it was just, it was, just I, it, was so, it was so time consuming. And, you know, I don't mind working 24-7 if I like what I'm doing. But then also, for me personally, architecture, it just wasn't doing it for me. And I'm not sure if it was just because... I was so exhausted that I started to hate it or if it was just really not intriguing. But um, somewhere along the line, I kind of lost my interest in it. But luckily from other classes outside of architecture, I was able to meet some students who were in the major that I'm in now. And when they were like explaining it to me and telling me what they do, I was honestly like genuinely interested. And I was like, you know, maybe I should consider changing my major because the work they're doing um, in film and animation, like, like VFX and like editing videos and like, like all this crazy stuff. And I was like, like, that's like what I want to do. Like that sounds like interesting. And like the workload doesn't seem too intense for a freshman. And like, I feel like I could do that. And you know, also I'm, I'm like, what I'm 18 now. Like I'm, I, it's time for me to like explore and try something, you know, you know, I did architecture for four years in Wasad, loved it. And you know, I'm, I wasn't just going to stick to architecture just cause you know, um, but yeah, so that's kind of why I changed my major. Uh, I was tired. <laughs> the short story, I was tired, but yeah, thank you. Um, Janet? Um, I thought I asked a um, question, but, um, you guys graduated during, like, I know during the pandemic, but like when you guys first started your first year, was there, were you guys lost for your first year? Cause you know, it was during, it was online and like you didn't met in person. Uh, Ariana, do you want me to go first? Or you want to go first? You can go first. <laughs> so basically, yeah, I mean, obviously it was very daunting because you think, like, when you guys think of going to college, you probably think, like, of the college lifestyle that you see, like, on TV, like, you know, like, dorms and socializing and stuff like that. But it was the opposite of that. Like, I was 
taking, I was like going to college classes in my bedroom. It was just a very weird experience. And like at first, I loss would be a, a great way to actually explain it because there was like no, it's just kind of like I was just thrown into college essentially. Like there was no transition period. Like the orientation was online. I've never even been inside of my school before. Like, I mean, I, I, I've been inside there. I got a COVID test there, but I've never like been to classes there. I've never been to like the cafeteria or the bookstore. Like, like I, the only experience I've had with my school has been online through my phone or through my computer. So I was like completely lost because I didn't, I had no idea what I was doing. You know, I was like fr- barely fresh out of high school. It felt like I never graduated because of COVID, you know, graduation was online. So it was just a very, very, very weird experience. Um, and yeah, so loss is a perfect way to explain it. But obviously over time I've become more adjusted to it. I've, you know, met people, made friends and just become more accustomed to like the college zoom lifestyle. Um, so I'm not lost anymore. I mean, I probably, am. I'm probably lost. Who knows? But I'm not as lost as I was before. <laughs> um, for me, I think what Tony said just now really explains it. That, like the transition period, there was none. Like it was like, okay, I'm in high school. Okay, we're on Zoom now, and like, <clears throat> and now I'm on Zoom in college. But I think what helped me a lot was the fact that I did have an orientation because of my in-person studio class. So I was with a group of people that I was going to be with for the fall semester. And we were all in, like, the same place, thrown into, like, the same pot of, like, okay, you're an architecture student now. You have to do all this work. And I think that is what really helped me the most because this group of, these group of kids, like, were the same as me. We were doing the same amount of work, and we were all, like, talking and, like, sharing our experiences and stuff like that. And I think that is what made me not feel so lost. And I think that was, like, the most helpful thing, like, finding people who knew exactly how I was feeling. And we were all, like, sharing the same experience of, like, oh, like, we just, like, we were just in high school and now we're college students all of a sudden. Like, it's a, it's a big wave that hits you. Like, it's, like, the second week where, like, it really hit me, like, oh, like, I have to do this now. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. So I think, yes, I was lost, but, like, I probably, like, I'm telling you, I probably still am. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. But, like, <laughs> but, like, I think being with those people, like, really helped me the most. All right, next is Ryan Singh. He asked me to read the question. So he says to Ariana, how was the transition from Brooklyn to Buffalo? What's it like over there? Um, I think what I hate the most is the fact that I can't be like as independent because in Brooklyn, you can take a train, get to wherever you need to go in like 45 minutes. Here, you have to drive. And I didn't have my license until like November because COVID. I was taking classes in spring, but COVID hit, so that was canceled. So I just got my license recently. So that's really difficult. The fact that I have to like rely on other people to like get to where I need to go rather than just go by myself. That's what I really don't like. But it's like so like slow. <laughs> like everything's like so fast paced. Like you're moving here or there. You go where you need to go, get what you need to get done. But here it's so like slow. It's so weird. I don't <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it. I think I like New York City. I do. Because it's like so fast paced. I like going everywhere I need to go, doing what I need to do. And, like, having time for myself. But I feel like here, it's a lot more, I, like, rely on other people. And, like, travel time. Like, everything is so spaced apart. It's so weird. It's so weird. I don't, I don't think it's for me, but I am enjoying it here. Now. So. Um, David Akihe. So, what will be some warnings that an incoming freshman should be aware of when coming to college? um yeah so i'll start off definitely especially if you know hopefully when you all are college freshmen hopefully you don't have to be on zoom um who knows with the way the world is going but if you are on zoom it's very very easy to like fall behind like extremely easy, um, especially if because some classes you'll have maybe asynchronous, and basically if you don't know what synchronous versus asynchronous is, synchronous classes are classes that you have to like attend daily and go into Zoom meetings with your professor as if it was like an actual class, and asynchronous classes are classes where they just email you work and you just have to submit it by a deadline and you never meet your professor, you never meet your classmates. And, like, usually everyone's like, oh, yeah, like, I want asynchronous because that's just, like, I don't want to have to show up to meetings or whatever. And, like, yeah, in theory, 
asynchronous sounds like an amazing you know thing. I love my asynchronous clock because I don't have to see anybody. But um, you, it, you know, you can get carried away very easily and just fall behind on deadlines. So, you know, if you do end up having asynchronous classes or just any classes in general, it is very easy to fall behind. Um, especially because, like, I don't know, like the days go by so fast now. I guess because I'm on Zoom, but I rec- I really highly recommend like when you get work and if you know your schedule and you know what you're doing like these days, set aside time to like think, okay, if I have homework due Friday and I'm busy Thursday, today's Wednesday, you should do the work now. Don't set it aside for Thursday night because you're probably not going to get to it. Um, so just, you know, be really smart with your time management. And, um, you know, with your, and your syllabus, like make sure, like just, just pay attention and, you know, with Zoom too, it's just like, you know, I'm really hoping that you guys don't have to be on Zoom because it's just, it's kind of unfortunate. Um, but if it does end up being like that, just, you know, stay on top of your game, write down when you have homework, ask questions. You know, if you don't understand something, don't feel, like, afraid to ask, like, the professor because, you know, at the end of the day, you're paying tuition, you know, they can answer a couple questions if you're paying tuition, right? <laughs> so, yeah. But, um, but yeah, you know, just don't fall behind. Don't. Because it's it gets worse. As the semester goes on, it becomes more hectic and you get start getting midterms and projects out, you know, start getting a lot of work and then... Now you're thinking, oh, I have all this late work from the beginning of the semester, but now you're super busy when before you weren't that busy, but now you don't have the time to catch up on it. So just be smart and don't fall behind because that could really, you know, be the nail in the coffin for you. Not for you personally, but just like in general. But yeah, Ariana, you can go. <laughs> nail in the coffin. I think. Okay. Um. What is it? Like, time management? That's what everyone told me. Time management, time management, time management. I'm a big procrastinator. I'm so good at getting things done last minute. But that just doesn't work. It literally does not work anymore. <laughs> I can't. Um, everything, like, you think you would have all this time in the world because, oh, everything's on Zoom. I'm at home all the time. Like, no. Time goes by so fast. So when Antonio said, just get it done. Like, it like it sucks and you have to do it. But, like, just do it. The sooner the better. Because then, like yesterday, I forgot I had a whole assignment, and I was I had stayed up to like what two a.m. catching up on studio work and other classes that I don't have a Zoom call for. And you would think like classes without the Zoom calls like the best, and those were like my lecture classes last semester. And I didn't I didn't watch like half the lectures, and I was so behind. I was so close to like failing these classes that you would think would be so easy, but no. Like the lectures are long. You have to take notes. You have to take these quizzes, these tests, and they sneak up on you if you really don't get your like get it together for me like i from experience i know that um i would say the best thing to do what's worked for me is to like i'm really bad at planners but to make a schedule for myself that's what i did in high school and that helped a lot so like i set a specific time to do what work when and like as soon as like three to four i'll do like oh diversity class homework and then like four to six or four to eight i'll do like studio and then I'll go to bed the next day. I finish what I didn't do. At least I'll have, it's not done, but I'll have some of it done. And it's better than having nothing. And I think that's like the biggest, the biggest thing is time management. Um, excuse me. Next is Yamala Rosario. Um, I asked, but like you answered the question already. It was like, um, what are some things you do to help with procrastination? Because like I listen to music to like help me a bit, like you know, while I'm doing my work and like trying to get me like you know in the homework mood or working mood. But like a lot of people say that it's not good to do that because like you know you can't really do that in like. Let's say, like, in class, and, like, let's say you're having problems or procrastinating, you can't really listen to music. So, like, do you ever go through those problems in class? And if you do, like, what do you do to help yourself stay in track? Um, yeah, so for me... What pers- you mean, Antonio, just to answer the question. Well, I, you know... Okay, anyways. Uh, <laughs> um, for me... I can like definitely relate to what you're saying because also the classes that I have on zoom, some of my classes are like four hours long and like I could watch a four hour movie and be fine. But a four hour zoom session, that's like very daunting and very exhausting. 
And, you know, especially if, like, you have, like, other stuff on your mind or, you know, it's very hard. To, and it's, like, the disconnect to, to try to pay attention to someone talking on the computer for four hours. It's very, it's, like, it's, it's very difficult. Um, but what helps me with that is I try to put my phone away because I always find, like, and I mute my phone to put my phone on do not disturb because I, Ariana will be texting me, like, 24-7 while I'm, while I'm in class. And she'll be sending like TikTok videos and like, I want to watch it, obviously, but I can't because I'm in class. So, you know, um, put the phone away is what I, that works for me. I try to like put my phone away and mute it so I can just pay attention. If I notice that I'm falling asleep, which if you know me, I, I sleep a lot during meetings. Whenever we go to architecture girl, I'd always be asleep. But anyways, um, <laughs> um, yeah, so putting the phone away, muting the phone. But also, you said that listening to music helps you. I think whatever, like, helps you focus or pay attention, you should definitely, like, keep doing that. I know, like, some people don't listen to music. I like to listen to music, cause especially when I'm writing. It really gets me to the mood or, like, designing. It really helps me, like, just focus and block everything out. So if you have something that helps you, I think you should just keep doing that. Um, but also, also for me, also since my class is, like, four hours, try to go to sleep early. You know, obviously, if you have a lot of work, you have to stay up late. I get that. But try to stay up. Try to go to bed, like, at a reasonable time. Like, don't be like Ariana and go to sleep, like, at 4 a.m. And you have to wake up at 7. Because if you have a lecture that's, like, a couple hours long, you're going to fall asleep. And you're not going to be able to pay attention. Um, and, yeah, I, I don't want to ramble on. But, Ariana, you can go. <laughs> okay. I feel like Antonio's throwing a lot of subs in what he's saying. I don't go where I am by choice. I have studio work to do. It's so, <laughs> it's so hard. Like no, it's, so true. it's so true. Like when I was an architecture major, I would literally go to bed and wake up. Like I'd have like an hour. Oh, yeah, like, like an hour of sleep. I hated it. Oh my gosh. And I would fall asleep in front of the TA stays. I feel so no, bad. It's just like I, <laughs> no kidding. I look tired. Like obviously. I look tired. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when people say that to me, like, what's so tired? Like, I, why. I wonder why I look so tired. Thanks. Um, as to answer your question, for me, I can't listen, I can't do anything if I'm trying to get work done. Like, music doesn't help me because, like, I'll just, like, focus on the music instead of what I'm supposed to do. So, for me, what helps me the most is, like, nighttime. I don't know why, but when my room is, like, completely dark and I just have my laptop in front of me, it's so easy for me to just zone in on my work get everything done, like, an hour tops, like, get, like, just, like, zo- like zone out, just get it done. I think that's what, helped me the, what helps me the most. But then that's more of, like, a me thing than, like, an everyone thing. So I think what Antonio said, right, like, finding what helps you the most and really, like, sticking to it is what's, like, the most helpful. Yeah, and I think what could also be helpful is, like, what we both kind of said in the last question was, like, if you know you have something coming up and you know it's, like, due by a certain time, then you should really set aside that time to work on it like as to like and don't wait to like if you finish class and you're kind of already like in that work mindset then i think you should just do the homework now then rather than saying like let me just watch like netflix real quick and i'll do it like after an episode because it's never gonna happen like i'm definitely like guilty of that like i'll be like let me go have lunch and you know be on my phone for like an hour and then i'll return to the homework but it never really happens but then if i'm like done as soon as I finish the Zoom, I'm like, let me sit here for, like, an hour until I'm done. Let me just finish this work, get it just done and over with. That way I can just eat and relax. Don't have to worry about this. So just try to get it over with as soon as possible. And, like, if you're already in that work mood, try to do as much as possible. Because for me, at least, that work mindset doesn't really last for long. Like, one, as soon as I'm done with Zoom, I just want to, like, go to bed. But, uh, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the question. All right, and next is Ryan Singh. But he said, "I recently, I, I recently got accepted to Buffalo. Is there any information you could tell me that you wish you would have known before making your decision?" Um, there's nothing bad I can say about Buffalo. Like all the professors are so nice, and I was put for architecture specifically. I don't know if you're doing architecture. If you go, um, we're put into like, these pods of like nine students. So it's just these nine students, and we're all assigned. There's like three. There's four separate professors. And we get assigned one professor. So I was I was assigned a really good one. They're all really nice. But mine specifically was so kind. And she formed like these personal relationships with personal relationships with each student, which I found like amazing because she remembered me from last time. And she has like a bunch of kids to remember. I wasn't expecting that because Buffalo is such a big college. And there's like a hundred kids in the cohort for like my class, which is great. So I think that's a good thing. I don't think I can say anything bad or like anything to like warn you about about Buffalo. Just that. 
like it's a it's a good school the teachers are really nice the students are i never encountered like a rude person or like a rude student actually that's not true there was one lady in the office at the car office but i don't <laughs> really count that but the students is not, are nice the faculty is so nice everyone's so helpful you can talk to like anyone like just walking by it's really nice i like it Me? Um, so that's the last question in the chat. So I guess I'll ask like one final question. So a lot of us in here are seniors. So I was just wondering like any like last tips that you have because we're all going to be making decisions soon, getting college acceptances. So like what tips do you have or advice for college coming up for us in the fall? Um, so I'll start. Uh, first of all, con congratulations to all of you who are seniors now. And who are getting, like, getting your acceptances now. I remember that feeling. Uh, definitely crazy. Also sad if you get denied. You know, been there, done that. Uh, what are you going to do? But anyways, uh, yeah. So when it, came, when it comes to making decisions, I think the most important thing is to just do what feels right. Um, you know, that's like the biggest thing I can trust personally. Um, I got accepted to most of the schools I applied to. And so once you know what schools you got, uh, you got accepted to it, it's best for you to be like, okay, like obviously, cause like, you know, usually have the schools you really want to go to the schools you kind of want to go to and then the schools you don't really want to go to, but you apply to anyways, just like for safety. Um, like look at the schools that you really, really wanted to like go to that you really like that you applied to and got in and just really look at that. And then just think like, if you could see yourself in that school, and like, just kind of like what, what's important for you. And then you have to look at what the school offers. Like if you're really like, for me personally, I was looking for a more smaller school that's still in the city and has the, the majors that I offer, uh, the majors that I was interested in. So architecture. And like, obviously for me, it was a pretty simple choice because I was like, I want to stay in New York city. Um, but I also want a smaller school. I don't want a far commute. Um, I would love to go to school in Manhattan architecture. Um, so, you know, NYIT was kind of like a dead choice for me. Um, so, yeah, just do what feels right and think of what you want. Like, when you think of a college that's perfect for you, try to, like, think of a list. Like, okay, these are the things I want the most. And out of the schools you got accepted to, just, like, look at that. And also something that could be important for you to think about, uh, financials. You know, just, like, your financial situation. If you got scholarships, that's also, like, very helpful. Um, you know, if you're going to be doing loans, paying out of pocket, how does, how's that working? Um, you know, if a school offers you a really nice offer, you know, that might be something to think about too. So yeah, Ariana, you have the floor. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> you're welcome. Okay. Um, I think what I told you is that we took, I was going to say scholarships, like apply to as many scholarships as you can now, especially the summer before college, you have so much time. I wish I did that. But no, I was yep. just like nothing in my room all day because COVID. Like I, I could have been applying to scholarships. I could have been doing all these things to prepare myself, and I wasn't. So I think that's like the biggest thing, like scholarship and money. And also when Antonio said about like colleges and stuff, like figure out what you want. Like I almost went to RIT Rochester in like okay. a, a nowhere town in the middle of nowhere with like probably no one from where I'm from, like New York City. And I feel like Buffalo made so much more sense to me because it's like a, like a bigger school. Like a city, like there's a city close by Buffalo. It's in Buffalo, um, and I think <laughs> it's Toronto. <laughs> and I think that was such a like a much better fit for me. Even though like there was there was like like I think there's more opportunities for me in Buffalo than in RIT based on like what I want to do personally. So I think whatever fits you best is what you should do. And scholarships, scholarships, money is very important. Scholarships, 100. percent Yes. Also, don't go to school just because your friends are going there. That is a bad decision. Oh, yeah. Don't, idea, don't do that. Friends with them. <laughs> don't ever do that. Don't do that. That's <laughs> such a bad idea. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, and yeah, scholarships. I had, we had so much free time. Senior, when we were in Wasab, like, I'm not dissing Wasab, but we had, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we had, like, we had, like, a lot of time after school or, like, during the summer to really apply to scholarships. And it's not, like, I know when I was like a senior and a junior, I was like, that's like a lot of work. I'm not doing that right now. I'll do it like spring break. I'll do it, break. I'll do it during the summer. Never got done. You know, <laughs> like it's just, it, it doesn't hurt to apply. I got denied from every single scholarship I applied to. So I mean, <laughs> are you serious? 
Yeah, Donald's yeah. Burger King, like, damn, <laughs> okay. Like, you're supposed to, like, what tree number do you got to apply? That's, like, every every kid is applying for Yeah, that. kid in the country, like, okay, y'all so, apply for, so, apply to, like, local stuff. Like, the bigger ones don't matter the most. Because, yeah. like, you're not going to get up. Apply to local ones, like, smaller yeah. ones. Oh, Which are the ones you add up. Like, like, they add up. They do add up. Right. They do oh, add up. Also, I got a scholarship from the college board for, like, I'm not sure why, but the <laughs> college board, <laughs> if you meet certain requirements... <laughs> Like, if you, like, I think if you use Khan Academy or if you, like, take in the SAT or whatever, right. wow. yeah. college yeah. board offers scholarships, like, just check for, like, smaller scholarships because there tends to be a lot of them. Um, and, like, although it's not getting, like, a grand amount of money, if you, like, apply to a bunch of smaller ones, it can add up, you know. It might be, like, $100, but 100 times 20, I don't know what that is. <laughs> <That's> I- <a> lot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you know please apply to scholarships that, ariana is so smart genius groundbreaking so that's an amazing point of scholarships please do i don't want to sound like the annoying guidance counselor not that any of the guidance counselors are annoying. i don't you know what i mean apply to scholarships <laughs> yeah thank you um so yeah so that's it all the questions oh the real question is however are there still buffalo in buffalo <laughs> uh, <I'm, laughs> are there buffalo and buffalo i've never seen one but there are some like weird animals like there are some like foxes there's deer foxes i've never seen a fox in real life it's weird i've seen so many dead raccoons okay that's like deer. there's raccoons there's a lot of wild animals <laughs> that you like i've never seen them in new york city because all i see is rats like that's it <laughs> here there's like so much wildlife it's weird it's weird what's the weather like cold it was literally this morning it was fine but like it started snowing, so everything is ice now. That's fun. I almost died on the way to my house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> great. So, yeah, that was our last question. So, thank you for the presentation. It was great hearing from you guys again and that you guys are doing so good in college. So, hope you guys have a good rest of your freshman year. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God, thank you so much. And thank you to everybody here. Uh, I know most of you, you know, you guys are all great, very smart, talented. And congratulations on being accepted to colleges. I uh, can't wait to see what you guys do. And just enjoy this last, what is it, today's February? Enjoy these last couple of months of, um, of, of high school because it's going to go by like that. And, you know, it's just a little bittersweet. But I'm, I'm hoping that you guys get to have the experience that Ariana and I were robbed of. Robbed. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, like, I, I hope you guys do get to have, like, a graduation and go back to in-person classes because, you know, it'll suck if you don't have that. Um, but even if you don't, you guys are all amazing. You'll make it work. You guys are all strong, amazing people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so thank you for having us. And yeah. Thank you for allowing us to listen to you guys.